Welcome back to the huddle. I hope you've had a good week and your Supercoach team managed to dodge a bit of the carnage out there because for the Supercoach huddle team, it was a shocker. Still though, let's see how the players went before checking out the team for round three. After last week's scare, Cameron Smith stepped up and got a great score of 87. 20 of these points came from conversions and this was accompanied with 37 tackles and a couple of line break assists. Having a look at the front row, Andrew Fafita only scored 47 points in 50 minutes. He only made 11 tackles in that time. The Sharks were dominating though, so he really didn't have to do much. Hopefully next week he'll step it up to justify his price tag. Jared Wallace again played bigger minutes due to his team's injuries, and for his price he got a decent score of 52. This wasn't as good as last week, however, with a nice break even of zero, he should still make a nice amount of cash. Let's have a look at the second row. Sam Burgess, the captain choice, he got 65, which included a couple of tackle busts and three offloads. This was an okay score for a captain, however, would have liked to see him hit 80+, plus, and he still isn't playing as good as we've seen in the past. A massive dent in this week's score was due to Cardi getting injured and only scoring 8. Apparently there was talks of ankle syndesmosis or injury to a plate or screw from a previous surgery. However, recently scans have cleared him from any serious injury and he is a chance of playing next week. Elijah Taylor scored 43 and again he was in the wars. He had a head cut and a finger dislocation. Again, he didn't play 80, he went off around the mid 60 minute mark and I'm wondering, was this due to the dislocation and head cut or is it going to become a regular thing? His main points are coming from tackles, he got 38 tackles, he doesn't have many attacking runs or tackle busts. In the halves, JT scored 66, a decent score with a try assist, 4 conversions and a couple of forced dropouts. The draw now gets better for the Cowboys as they verse Manly, the Titans, the Rabbitohs and Tigers over the next 4 rounds. He'll definitely be a decent captain option. Sean Johnson played a tougher opposition this week versing the Melbourne Storm. He still did pretty well scoring in the 50s. He made an impressive 19 tackles for a halfback and scored a try. Having a look in the centre wing position, Sione Mataria only scored 37 from a full 80 minutes, which was very disappointing. He played in the second row at the back end of last year, and I'd be expecting him from 80 minutes in the second row to be getting around 50 to 60 points. He made 16 points from hit-ups, but he really doesn't look like he's wanting to step or make any tackle busts. He's just mainly carting the ball up to get field position. Dylan Walker scored 49 points, and if he didn't miss 5 tackles and miss 3 conversions, the score could have easily jumped up an extra 10 to 20 points. Moga scored 29 in base. He made 14 tackles and had 14 points from hit-ups. There were a couple of times where he put Oates through for a mini break and there were times Moga dropped the ball and then Oates dropped it, so his score could have been larger. Moses Sulik wasn't able to replicate his score from last week, however a 43 when his team only scored 2 points is a great score. He did have a line break from that, but 20 points also came from hit-ups. After his third game next week, he should make a nice amount of cash. Roger Tuovasashek had a great game at fullback last week, however, unfortunately he had a head knock this week, he wasn't able to return and only scored 7 points. On the bench, Felice Cafusi made an impressive 42 tackles, just didn't have many hit-ups and managed 50 points. For his price tag, he is going along nicely. He should hopefully make a around 20 to 30k next week. Tommy Turbo was the standout of the round. He had a try, a try assist and a couple of line breaks and it was great to see him bounce back from last week and bust out a great score. Kane Elgy had a very disappointing game, only scoring 24 points. It was his other half, Ash Taylor, he was controlling the game. He got four try assists. And the final player on the bench was Jared Hayne and yes, he was the third player to get hit with injury. He made a few hit-ups, scored 10 points, and then was out of there with an ankle injury. News is, he could miss 4-6 to six weeks, so he'll be gone out of the team in the near future. So after that schmozzle, let's have a look at our round 2 and overall ranking. Unfortunately, we're not going to see a green arrow this week. We've only managed 840 points, which is well below the average for round 2 of 920. We've dropped around 27,000 places, quite a massive drop there, and our overall rank now is around 44,000. We had a bit of a shocker, this is quite disappointing after a decent start last week, however, it's only round 2, we've still got 24 rounds to go, we've got those buy rounds in the middle of the season where we can hopefully make some good trades and make up the distance. Let's have a quick look now at any trades we're going to make to hopefully improve the team and make some cash. 
Looking at the trades for this week, it's a very important week as players' prices are going to change after their Round 3 game. Very tough decisions ahead of the Supercoach Huddle team, especially with Bryce Cartwright in the team. Initially, the reports was Cardi was going to miss a few games, and I was going to bring in maybe a Cody Walker and go a Jared Hayne to Cohen Hess. With Cohen Hess, though, I'm still not 100% sold on him as he has scored a try in his last two games. If he was named in the starting lineup, though, I would be all over him. However, on the bench still, his minutes are still unknown. Another option for Cardi would have been Tao Malolo, but he's now been suspended for two weeks with that shoulder charge. I will be keeping my eye on Cohen Hess to see if any news is released whether he will replace Tamalolo. However, Sean Fensom named on the extended bench could just slot right in there. So now that Cardi has been named to play, it's really going to test my strength to stick to those key supercoach rules of never trading guns unless they're injured or out for a long period of time. The things telling me to trade him are his injury cloud, that bone bruise, and the media attention which may be affecting his headspace and performance. He's got a massive break even, he's going to lose a lot of money, however, he's a keeper, he's a gun, his price going up and down shouldn't matter as at the end of the season he should have a good average. So over the next few days I will be keeping an eye on the Cardi news, however, with coaches these days it may not be till one hour before the game that we'll actually know anything. If it all looks good and it looks like he is set to play, we'll keep him in there and we'll trade out Jared Hayne for Brock Lamb. Brock Lamb is set to make around 40 to 50k, that's if he hits his projection of around 44 if Cardi is not named, it'll be quite frustrating as the likes of Cody Walker would have already played and we wouldn't, won't be able to get them in. I may be tempted to bring in Cohen Hess who plays after the Panthers just for that quick cash grab and who might be a stepping stone for Tamalolo. So it's an interesting week, got a few tough decisions ahead, but we'll keep an eye on the news and hopefully the week will go well. So let's have a look now at the team for round three. So the team this week, if we only make the trade of Jared Haim to Brock Lamb, is Brock Lamb's going to come onto the bench. They're versing the Rabbitohs at home. Dean Viro is also going to get a starting position as the Panthers have a home game against the Roosters. Moga will be dropping out of the starting 17 as the Broncos have a tough matchup against the Storm. The vice captain this week will be Sean Johnson. They're versing the Bulldogs. So let's have a look now at who we're going to captain. And the captain for this week is Jonathan Thurst, and now he had an average of 70 last year. We know what he can do. His next opponent is Manly at home. Over the past few years, he averaged 86.3 against Manly, which is a great average. The only slight concern is the weather forecast. At the moment, it is a shower or two. However, I will keep a close eye on the weather forecast up there in Townsville. If it looks like it's going to worsen, I'm going to consider putting the captaincy on Sam Burgess. Sam Burgess is versing the Knights, and last year he turned up in both games against the Knights. The Knights do look like they have a stronger team this year, however, I'll keep an eye on the weather and make the change if necessary. So be sure to check those team lists one hour before each game. You don't want to get a nasty surprise when one of your players has been dropped from the starting 17. I'll also be posting these team lists on the Supercoach Huddle Twitter page. I'll also let you know of any team changes, for example, if we change our captain based on the weather, and check out the late mail, Wacko's Whispers is great, as well as the NRL and Fox Sports websites. So all the best with your team this week, let's go!